welcome to Queen Anne's County School Board meeting for March the 2nd, 2022. Do I have a motion going to close the session? So moved. Pursuant to the general provisions, Second. Article 3-305 oh. and 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County will meet in closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction, any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals, to conduct the to consult with counsel to obtain legal advice and to consult with staff, consultants, and other individuals about pending or potential litigation. Mark first, I second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. We'll be back at six o'clock for our regular school board meeting. Thank you. Welcome to the Queens County School Board meeting for March the 2nd. Can we stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everybody has an agenda in front of them. Mr. Smith, I make a motion to accept the agenda as presented. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. You've had a chance to look at the approval of the work session minutes for closed on February 23rd. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept uh, the work session minutes for February 23rd closed session? Second. second. The motion is second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. You also have the approval of work session, I'm sorry, work session minutes, yes, for open session for February 23rd. And I make uh, motion. a motion, sir, to approve the work session minutes for the open session of February 23rd, 2022. Second. The motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Okay, our next order of business will be recognitions. Yes, um, <coughs> President Smith and members of the board, I have a distinct honor to invite up Miss Kendall Moxie, if she will come forward, as well as her teammates that are here to support her and her coach. And we also have Mr. Marchetto here, uh, one of the APs at the school. Um, Kendall, Kendall is one amazing young lady, I have to say. Um, and I'm thankful that I was able to uh, investigate and round up a little bit of some of your accomplishments. So Kendall is um, has the second highest rebounds in Queen Anne's County High School history. <laughs> like, wow, right? Oh, my Sorry. I'll say it again then. Yeah. Yeah. I want to try. So. Test, test. Good. Test. It's on, Pam. It's on. Mm -hmm. So, Kendall, I'll say that again. Kendall has the second highest rebounds in Queen Anne's County High School history. That's just one thing. This year scored 486 points, averaging 23.1 points per game, and 319 rebounds, averaging 15.2 per game. She is the third female at Queen Anne's County High School history to achieve 1,000 points in her career. But what's really special about that is she did that in two and a half years because the girls weren't allowed to play for two years. Again, two and a half years she broke that record. And her all-time career points are 1,168, the highest ever for any Lady Lion. So congratulations. <laughs> Well done. And at this time, I'd like to 
on this until the others. And at this time, I'd like to have uh, Mrs. Susan Wahlberg from Churchill Elementary School, our principal there, to come up. And she has nominated three folks this evening that we'd like to recognize. The first award is our Energizer Bunny Award. And this award is given to a staff member or a volunteer who keeps on going. It is sponsored by Bayview Financial with Mr. Chip Brittingham and Mr. Wayne Humphreys. I don't know if they're here this evening, but if you see them. Oh, they are here. Wonderful. No, they're not. Okay. That's all right. So this Energizer Bunny Award goes to Miss Victoria Hay. Congratulations to you, as written by your principal. Ms. Pape is an instructional assistant in our pre-K classrooms. She is dedicated and loves her job mainly because she enjoys watching her students grow and learn. Words that describe her include active, lively, energetic, flexible, and dynamic. And whatever her students need is what she works hard to achieve. No matter the challenge, she keeps going and going and going. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, oops. Can you move it just a little bit more, please? There. Because she could free up her hands and she'd be in our Thank you. Thank you. She could put it back here. So. <laughs> Star Award, this award recognizes someone in our school system who shines. Um, again, Ms. Susan Wolbert, the principal, has nominated Ms. Jane D'Angelo. Yes. Congratulations to you as well. Ms. Jane is an instructional assistant at Churchill Elementary School. Our students describe her as kind, caring, and helpful. Our staff says she is dependable, hardworking, and fun. This star shines so brightly all day, but she lights up Churchill with her organized Chick-fil-A pickup line <laughs> at the end of the day. She leads this pickup line with a smile, greeting families as they sign out their cubs in the most organized car riding dismissal ever. Families line up in three lines that lead to two lines that lead to one line for their pickup. Jane is our true shining star inside and out. So congratulations. Can you move this just a little bit? Yep. And Dr. Sales, yep. Exactly. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Right here. Just me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. I'm going to come to that line, but I'll, I'll try to do it right. You really are. Yeah. <laughs> Soon the mist. Yeah. And our last award this evening is the Queen Anne County Public Schools Spirit Award. This award is given to an individual who embodies the spirit of Queen Anne County Public Schools. And I'd like to invite up Mr. Michael Moore. So Mr. Moore is our learning lab instructor. Michael has an enthusiastic and determined attitude. He keeps the Cubs strong spirit alive at Churchill Elementary School. He leads our student council group in organizing spirit days and participates in every way. He also manages our staff social committee, bringing lots of fun and exciting things to the staff. His spirit is truly contagious and our students look to Mr. Moore daily for a smile and a laugh. So, thank you. Later. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.
next is our board and staff involvement. Uh, um, you want to start off, Mark? Or? Yeah, no comment from me. Oh, well, I'll say that uh, I had a privilege of touring uh, with Dr. Sellins Kennard. She does a visit to all our schools and uh, sees what's going on. Very interesting to go through a school and see the, um, the way the teachers are teaching and the teamwork being done there. I was very impressed with Kennard. We went to a couple classes and the third and fourth grade, the third grade, when you go in one class, you go into the next one and they're on the same page. You know, they, they, these teachers are working together to make sure that when they go to the next level, they're all close to being on the same page. There are different classes, but you can tell they've worked together in their, in, their, in their times where they can make sure that, you know, here we are and, and, and training the uh, students. And it's, um, it's very impressive and very rewarding. And I think you go to every school three times a year. Mm -hmm. so. And do my principal. That was a principal visit. Principal visit. And it's it's very interesting to see the way the staff interacts and, uh, and the kids, too. Uh, and it had been even more pleasurable if we could see masks, which next time we go, we won't have a mask on. <laughs> That's right. Well, that's a good segue into me. I would like to say how grateful we all are that the mask mandate has been lifted, and it's so wonderful to see everyone's faces, and they're smiling, and, and let's hope that we are on the backside of this pandemic, and God bless us all. Um, let's see, board involvement. So I attended a couple of basketball games. Mm -hmm. I got to watch the Queen Anne's County High girls win the Bayside Championship. That was very exciting. And then last Friday, I got to read to Ken Island Elementary. So pre-K and kindergarten classes are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Reading to those guys was fun. Um, and I will do it anytime anybody asks. So just give me a call. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Oh, I was going to go to. Oh, I've already. Mark. Okay, sorry. Um, so I'd like to ask for Mrs. Power Orders to come up because in lieu of my comments this evening, I'm very excited to share with the board that I think we've worked out just about all of the glitches with our new website. And so it is um, up and running and um, we're, we're geared up and I just am so excited to share that with you. So Lana's going to just walk through some of the highlights and um, I think you'll find that it's very attractive, very informative and easy to um, navigate. So just just take a couple minutes for that. So we wanted to make sure that um, first and foremost, the site was um, much more user friendly. And the other great thing is that this is our first launch of the main site and then each school will be um, continuing on with the same format so that if a parent goes, a child goes from elementary to middle to high school, the parent will be able to follow the website very easily for each school. Um, if you click under about, um, over to the right is the Board of Education and the board members and your lovely pictures are on here as well. Um, <laughs> Thanks for that. Sure. <laughs> we can zoom in on that. Um, and then um, we also have the superintendent and leadership at the bottom. Um, Mr. Noel, or Dr. Noel, excuse me, we'll have to get yours in there, I apologize. Um, and then, um, on the left side, it says parent resources. We did have it labeled something else, but now it's parent resources. So the parents can actually go in and really find the forms and links to items that they need very quickly. Um, Power School, as well as Board of Education, again, the board docs, things that they might be interested in, food service, transportation, athletics, and very important school health and special ed. And they keep going down. Um, but I think it's very easy, very user friendly. School registration has its own link right up here at the top on the right. So um, coming in summer and August, that's gonna be used very frequently. And then a lot of people are asking about, um, we have our updated pre-K and K registration on there, as well as the dates and um, which link to click on for next year. Um, make sure that if you're registering for pre-K and K for next year that you click on the 2022-23 link and not this year's. Um, the flyers over here to the right, this is what we've always had, and I don't think many people knew that we had this, but it's very important for the community that we have so many community flyers on here and access to information surrounding our community um, with all of our partners. Um, we have, of course, the COVID-19 link at the top. Hopefully, we won't need that much longer. <laughs> um, 
but uh, we do have updates there as well as the PCR testing and rapid tests and things like that. So this is just a quick rundown of some of the important things. The academics, of course, are on there, curriculum, high school, special ed, and student services. Um, I'm always welcome, as is everybody here on the board and Dr. Salins for suggestions and comments. And there is a link um, for you to email directly to either Carrie or myself for community comments. Um, we're happy to launch this and um, we will be launching. We're gonna be um, from this site, once this is completely full and all the content has been uploaded, um, we're gonna be starting with elementary schools, starting alphabetically with Bayside and then continuing on. And our target, target date for all of the sites to be complete will be um, December of 2022. And that will be with the high schools at the end because they have a lot of content. Um, but if you have any questions or anything, I'm happy to answer it. If you have any suggestions, please forward them my way. And I do want to commend Josh um, Combs because he worked diligently with our technical staff for the new platform and it, they were able to work out a lot of kinks. And there's also a subscribe button at the top just so you know that you can subscribe and get our newsletters as well. So a lot more coming, but I just wanted to show you what we have so far. And, and, and I just, um, is there a way that if somebody um, needs something translated on the website to? Oh. Yes. Just so to at the top, so at the too. very top left, um, if you would like a different language, we have um, right now we have Haitian Creole and Spanish. We will be adding more to there, um, but that will convert the whole website to the language that is most proficient for you. Okay. Thanks. Any Thanks. questions, though? I think I think it's a great asset, and I you know communication is what we need, yes. and. Um, I think you're a good point person. They can either email you. I guess your extension number at the board office is? 198. 198. Uh, if anybody has any questions, because uh, we need to get the information out and people need to understand what's going on. Absolutely. And I think uh, they can look at this at their leisure. And it, and, and then and each school Describe. by the end of the year will have their own. It could yes. be our, the website, but they'll have updates for each school so you'll be yes. able to interact on. Each and we'll school. also be doing a nice little redo of their logo to kind of incorporate our way and what um, we stand for into each of the um, other logos. And Bayside will be first, and they're working on their site, and they're really it's excited. Very, and their taglines, and it's, it's very exciting to see how cute. they all come together. Yeah. But subscribe, 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 yes. because that means you're, you're sure not to miss information. If there's a news release that goes out, it'll come automatically to you directly. You wouldn't have to go to the website and poke around. Exactly. So. And we and probably we'll got to, like other websites, you subscribe, and if you want to unsubscribe at some point, mm -hmm. you can Sure. So yeah, it would be so, and, and we do not send this email out to anybody else. It's, it's not it's, shared. It's not, it's it's not, not shared sold. with anybody. It's, so it's, if you send it you're not going to be put on any other list. It mm -hmm. can just be our personal. Our personal. Exactly. And again, all comments and suggestions are greatly appreciated. Thank, Thank you. you. Very Excellent. exciting. Thank yes. you so much. That's that? that goes to Amy now. Yeah. So, uh, that was me. Okay, with you. <laughs> uh, Amy, who up, Mrs. Hudak? Dr. Salins, board members, and the rest of the executive team. So I bring to you the February spotlight on our, our schools. So um, showcasing the elementary schools first, we have Bayside Elementary School. Um, the students at Bayside did research and learned about many contributions uh, of African Americans in recognition of Black History Month. Um, their artwork, their writings are displayed um, on bulletin boards throughout the school and you can see the pictures. Bright colors and looks very nice. Well done. Centerville Elementary School. Um, 
also the students were learning about many contributions um, African of African Americans. Um, they looked at heroes, inventors, singers, songwriters, actors, athletes, um, and many more. Um, they also will continue to focus on many heroes of other cultures as well. Um, the three-year-old class showcased their artwork in a pop-up museum and students and staff were invited to visit their museum. Um, Churchill Elementary School, um, they created a Google site to celebrate Black History Month. Um, the teachers used the site to share trivia questions and you can see a sample of that on um, the far right. And the site also included the teachers reading aloud books that were written by black authors. And they included a video as well to view. Um, Graysonville Elementary School, um, so starting February 14th, which is they celebrated Kindness Week, and it was the 14th through the 18th, and the students um, gave kindness notes to show their appreciation to each other. Um, they also celebrated the 100th day of school. We'll see that as a thread as well, um, using their math skills to make 100th day projects, and then they dressed up, you can see at the bottom, um, as 100-year-old students, <laughs> um, which is very cute. Um, Graysonville also has started virtual family nights and their fifth grade class um, did arts and crafts projects. Third grade class had game night. Second grade hosted a virtual story time. They had hot chocolate and they read good night, good dog. And the kindergarten participated in a letter number scavenger hunt. And they're going to continue the virtual family nights through the month of March. Um, Kennard, um, we have third and fourth graders pictured and um, staff received PD and who you are seeing here are Mrs. Reeds and Mr. Cruz. Mrs. Reed is a third grade teacher, Mr. Cruz is a fourth grade teacher and the students are shown doing collaboration um, on practicing with partners. Um, Ken Island Elementary School, uh, they made cards for healthcare professionals um, at Graysonville and Anne Arundel uh, Medical Centers, which I thought was very nice, reaching out to the community, school-wide participation in National Read Aloud Day. They also celebrated the 100th day of school on the 18th of February, and as Ms. Uh, Bent shared, she read to pre-K and kindergarten students at Ken Island Elementary, as well as a community member, Demetrio Beach. He read to first and second graders. Um, Mattapique Elementary School um, was very busy. They celebrated Black History Month, Valentine's Day, 100th day of school, and they also had a PBIS event, and this is the first one they've had in two years, and it was Mattapique Elementary School Olympics. Um, they did this event on Tuesday, which, as everybody knows, I'm sure, February 22nd, 22, and the staff and students wore tiaras, tutus, ties, tie-dye, or they participated in Twins Day. It's a great picture. I see, I think that's Miss Mitten right there, mm -hmm. the principal. Um, Sudlersville Elementary School celebrated Friendship Day, um, which is February 14th, Valentine's Day. Um, students participated in wellness activities with Mr. Brainerd, the PE teacher, um, using the parachute. They also, as you can see in the picture to the far right, put their handprints on their friendship tree to create a welcoming climate. Uh, they listened to read alouds that surrounded friendship and kindness, and they also enjoyed healthy snacks and created boxes of which they used to receive their friendship cards. Our four middle schools, Centerville Middle School, um, Ms. Bauer and Mr. Tolson, um, their students um, built balloon-powered cars to demonstrate their understanding of Newton's law of motion, and then they would alter them, modify them, um, their design to maximize the distance, so then they would compete. Um, Mattapique Middle, um, these students are participating in art projects. Stevensville, um, students um, are participating in a gallery walk where they're providing feedback. 
and then they learn from each other. Southerfield had, um, they celebrated Black History Month through um, Who Am I program. And that program was um, every day, I believe, I, when I read this, okay, let me see if I can remember. Uh, a new biography riddle was shared um, with students in email. And then the students would take that information and, and try to figure out who the person was. Um, and then they also included a video. Um, additionally, there were two assemblies. Um, seventh and eighth grade participated um, on February 22nd, and it was a theatrical storytelling. And then fifth and sixth graders today participated in, in an assembly that was interactive music. Um, our high schools surrounding what you just saw, um, some of that. Uh, but Ken Island um, has indoor track, 2A regional champs, boys and girls, um, cheer, 2A regional and state champions. And then we had um, a first female student win an individual running event, um, 2A state champion for the 3200 meter. And and boys and girls swim teams finished third in regionals with um, several of the students, student athletes qualifying for states. And Queen Anne's men's um, basketball um, has set its best record in school history. They're 19 and one, as you met this evening. Some of the uh, Queen Anne's Lady Lions, for, and they were Bayside champs. Um, Interact Club made projects, um, service projects, um, and they made fabric and rope pool toys for uh, Queenstown Animal Shelter, and then they also donated um, supplies. And then we had 14 um, students from Queen Anne's County High School travel to Ken Island, and um, what they did was they performed and um, it was through the Maryland um, District 5 Solo Ensemble Festival. 14 students took part, and out of that, we had five superior ratings and three excellent ratings. And one last piece, facilities. I'm still reporting cafeteria tables. So Queen Anne's High received 40 new cafeteria tables, and you can see them. And I know the big thing is that um, the seats are attached. That's huge. So they don't have to stack all, all of those um, chairs. That's awesome. Okay. And that's, that's the spotlight for February. Thank you. Okay, our next will be our student board members. Brent, would you like to start off? Um, yeah, um, for the Queen Anne's County High School Theater Program is presenting the James and Giant Peach performances on March 4th, 5th, and 12th at 7 p.m. Um, they also have one on March 13th at 2 p.m. at the high school, all at the high school. Um, admissions are $10 for adults, $5 for students and seniors, and, f and children five and under are free. Um, they will also have a midweek performance for Suttersville and Kennard Elementary, as well as Centerville Middle School on March 10th, I guess in the middle of the day, so the kids can go see the theater program. Um, Senior District Band Festival will be on March 9th. Justin's will be on the site for seniors to pick up for the graduation announcements and other items on March 17th. The caps and gowns will be distributed in um, May, so any additional items you have bought from Justin's will be handed out then. Um, there was an SAT day on March 23rd for our seniors. This is free of charge. Um, also, there was a career fair for non-college bound seniors at Centerville United Methodist Church on March 15th from 9.30 to 1.30. So, I mean, like, I, if you're interested in that, you can talk to your guidance counsel. Um, seniors should um, continue to check their Naviants for scholarships. In this past week, um, it was National FFA Week. They had canned food drive competition, and each day had a different theme, including Maryland Day, Camo Day, Hat and Muck Boot Day, and Flannel Day, and Blue and Gold Day. And then spring sport tryouts started on Tuesday and Wednesday, and our boys basketball team is in the playoffs playing tonight at Wyacomico High School. So. Best of luck to them. Hey, good luck to all. Uh, hi, everyone. So I had a lot of similar things to Queen Anne's as well. Um, at Kennelon High, we're fully in the swing of our second semester. Our swing sports are starting up again after a very successful winter sports season. Um, as mentioned before, we had state champions in track and cheer. Our girls basketball team won their playoff game last night. And 
and states for our wrestling team are this weekend, and tryouts for our sports uh, for this spring have started this week as well. Um, there's also a new chess club at Ken Island, which we are very excited about. And last week we had a, another successful blood blood drive through the blood bank of Delmarva, and interim reports were sent out on Friday. And our student body has done really well with the removal of the mask mandate, and our students and staff are being courteous of those who choose to continue to wear masks. And we'll also be having a free SAT day at Ken Island this month. And um, also make sure you catch our production of The Little Mermaid, which opens this Friday, and you can purchase tickets for now. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, moving on, we have citizens' comments. Do I have anybody signed up? Mr. McNeil. We, good evening. We ask all speakers to keep in mind the following. Speakers should sign the roster, including their telephone and, uh, number and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes length. Comments longer than that should be submitted in writing. Questions or statements to the board should relate to a matter of general policy over which the board has authority. Comments about actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comment and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or the board president. If you have specific questions, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member responds to your question. The board respects your desire and right to convey your message freely, but ask as a courtesy to this board and our citizens to show respect for all. You are always number one up here. <laughs> <laughs> name your name Good and evening. address. Richard first. McNeil, and I represent the myself and the retired school personnel group. And uh, uh, for some of us who are getting older, uh, it's hard to believe it's March. Uh, I don't know what happened to February, but it just disappeared. Um, I want to thank the uh, the board, uh, number one, for uh, highlighting uh, what's going on in schools. Um, there is, in my experience, many more th good things going on in schools than are negative. And unfortunately, the negatives are sometimes of what drives uh, boards of education crazy. So I thank you for all of that. It's good. Um, the retirement group offers their congratulations to all the school personnel who are getting prepared for the gala. Um, the teachers, uh, the school staff, the bus drivers, and everybody else. Uh, I know that's in the process, and uh, we congratulate everybody. Um, there's a lot of good teachers go out there and uh, a lot of good support folks and we just need to pat them on the back and uh, thank you for that um, I want to uh, personally encourage the community who might be listening to come out to the plays um, you know th this county doesn't really have a lot of theaters and movies and, and entertainment and again my experience uh, has been that you have great talent at both schools um, and the plays and, and the drama department. Uh, the community members need to know that's going on. And I know that, as uh, Mr. Smith said, communication is important. The more we can get that out there to see the talent that comes out of these uh, children, both in the uh, support for what's on the stage, uh, is what's in the pits, and, and the choreography that goes on beyond that. So I'd like to just encourage that. Um, I'm fully aware that the budget process that you're going through is a challenging endeavor and I, and I know it's coming to a close to a certain extent and again I, I thank you for uh, what you have gone through uh, to get to this point um, I trust that all of your decisions have been based on what is good for the education of the children of Queen Anne's County and uh, and I know that when you're looking at uh, money and there's only so much in the bucket uh, you got to do what you can with it, but uh, I, I encourage you to, as you go through that process and finalize it, that, that's it. Um, from the retirement group, I thank you again for your support of our uh, health package. Um, we are having our annual uh, business meeting. We are required by the state to have one, and it's, ours is in March. It's next Tuesday. Um, if you're in the area, we're going to be meeting at uh, Centerville Methodist Church for lunch at 12 o'clock. Um, so just let me know. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have any of us signed up? I know, but I don't. That's the last. Is anybody else would like to speak in front of the board? Nobody signed up, but is anybody else in the audience want to speak? Okay, thank you. Uh, our next thing would be 707.01 board policy regulations to rescind. Has everybody had a look at that? Any? I 
Michael's going to come up and share. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, members of the board, and fellow executive team members. For the record, my name is Michael Knoll. I am the Director of Human Resources, and I come before you this evening to present for your review a number of policies and regula regulations to be considered for retirement. Many are dated, some as far back as 1989, and are no longer relevant to Queen Anne's County or covered in a more recent updated policy, COMAR, or law of some um, way, shape, or form. As you are aware, the policy on policies calls for us to monitor our policies, look for updates, modifications, as well as those policies that we need to consider to retire, as well as bringing new policies forward. So the policy and regulation list presented to you tonight is a list of policies for consideration to be retired. We ask that you review these policies. We will be bringing them back to you next month for an action item. And the list of policies is all inclusive as to what the current policy is, as well as the reason for the consideration to retire those. So if you have any questions or concerns about any of those policies while reviewing those, please reach out to Dr. Salins and she will forward those so that we can get you the answer that you may need as to why these are being considered. My two questions, just as I looked over and went through a couple of them, 644 use of telephone that looked like it was last updated in, in only 2019 but as fast as social media and telephones are used is that something that's on our radar to update on a on i say a regular basis but on a i mean it just changes so fast and, and that one mentions a pay phone still right so, I mean, that, that's what i'm saying i, I saw that it's one of those that is dead. very dated and it is one that is now covered i know what the answer 644 the acceptable use too oh, yeah it's part of the acceptable use policy which talks about our our cell phones but our but even that one today's policy. technology with with communication with apple watches and things of that nature that is a policy that is going to continually need to be monitored so that we do as a school system keep up with the modern technology because if not the students are going to be telling us the ways that they can communicate that we're not even aware of yet. Can I interject too? There, there was one called Salesman in the Schools. There was one from 1993 called Salesman in the Schools. I think that got left off the list. I applaud this because I've been asking for the last how many years to have all these policies rescinded and the thank you for that. Uh, I have to go back and look in it, but there is one that called Salesman, Salesman in, in Schools. Yes. I, will, I will look into it. It needs to be added to this list because okay. it's already covered under a, another policy about visitors in the school will do and, and the only thing that when i was looking at this because it says the last one 710 participation community drives basically it's volunteers in school is well the, the volunteers in schools is now the new 710 okay. this is actually the old 710 which again because well, uh, when i went on my talked thing, about participation in community drives which was a 1993 policy which is now covered with just different ways that we bring the community into our schools and it has been supplanted now with the volunteers which is one that we continually monitor because we do need to keep track of that but that's 710 <clears throat> yes <clears throat> that's the one when i looked it up i i saw that one i didn't okay does the board have any i said what what you're asking us is to get in touch with dr salins on any questions we'd have and yes sir we will ask the board to take an action on this next month so that we can remove some of these dated policies okay appreciate it thank you seven point oh two second read Yes, uh, President Smith, members of the board, um, I brought this to you last um, board meeting to update your policy on policies. 
and I think I think Michael and I are going to get the award for who can say that word the most tonight. But um, <laughs> you can see um, that there was no additional changes that were made. Um, they're the same. So I will certainly um, be happy to entertain any additional questions. But if you recall, we were trying to realign this. Um, there was a policy committee. We're going to be realigning that to um, two different committees. Uh, uh, one that will be, in, both of those will be in the regulation. Um, one would be a community advisory to the board as they review policies. They can offer suggestions to the board as well as a school system improvement, which will represent every um, school within the district as well as the um, association and the um, administrative and supervisors and who will also um, look and review policy and offer suggestions and recommendations to the board. So that was the purpose behind making the changes um, to move in a different direction to give more buy-in to stakeholders and to give the board um, more opportunities to hear from those that um, that impact your decisions. Is that going to satisfy the parent advisory committee, I think, requirement? Yes, which is, okay. yes, right. which is part, part of Comar, absolutely. And okay. that's a very good question. So that Citizens Advisory Council will satisfy that Comar. The, um, the SSIC or the School System Improvement Council really would just be an added addition that I think would, in my opinion, would offer more stakeholders sure. to, you know, for the board to be able to see uh, what our teachers and our association and our administrators feel about the different policies that are coming through. So just a, a greater voice, um, but not not a mandate. The one is Comar regulation, the other one is not. Right. So have we had any public comments on this? It's kind of yeah. Awesome. Have we had any? No, and there is a link there. It, the link doesn't. It doesn't work. Oh. That's why I asked. That's why I asked. Okay. <laughs> Still in data, but no public okay. comments. Okay. There so, is no comments, but if we do, okay. we certainly will okay. pass them along. Thank you. Thank yes. you. So the board will have the same responsibility all to is what direction we're getting more information on making it look more rounded. Yes, okay. yes. And again, this is a second read, so we'll come back to you. Um, if, if anything in between, if, um, if you have an additional question that you don't think of this evening, please obviously reach out and I'll be happy to um, share that information with you. This gets the public involved and that's what we need. I mean, we need the public, if they have questions or concerns, you know, our policies dictate the way the system is run and that's what we need to do is have these things looked at, mm -hmm. not after the fact, but before. Right. Any other questions by the board? No. 7.03. Pulling. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. For the record, my name is Matt Evans, Supervisor of Student Services. I'm before you tonight with uh, the bullying, harassment, intimidation policy number 505. This was uh, updated by the MSDE. Uh, basically, they provided us a, a new model policy. In short, um, they changed, updated the definition specifically bullying, cyberbullying, harassment, intimidation. Um, and ultimately victim is now called the targeted student. So we're following the MSDE Correct. guidelines on this? Okay. Yes. But we're using our, the policy of policies, the format. It's, yes. it's been put in the format. Okay. Yes. So they, they forward me the, the model policy and the language. I put it in our format and then Mrs. Andrews really makes sure it's exactly right. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> I don't have a question on that. I guess the question I have is on the sheet that we keep getting every time. Mm -hmm. When we change over to having this wider input of different groups to input, I don't know if this is going to be necessary anymore or if it is updated because I agree. Since, since I've been Thank here, you. I've never seen anything. And it and it's not and on anybody, but it goes from the Teachers Association to the Chamber of Commerce to, to American Legions. And I just, I, I don't know, Tammy, have you ever seen it? Mark, I mean. I have seen um, it, and I have seen it. It's been used over the years. I know, but have you seen anybody ever comment on it? Uh, once or twice, but not usually. Now I just think if it's not going to be, maybe there's a better avenue you can do sure. and get this thing out of here. Absolutely. And with our public comment, that certainly is always affords anyone an opportunity. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I, I do agree if we, if we have the SSIC and the CAC, um, that that is uh, you know a much broader reach and provides a better voice. Mm -hmm. And so I appreciate that feedback. And with our new website, 
it will be on there when we're doing things like this. Exactly. So, so people have the access to that if it pertains to somebody, and they can get on our, let's like said earlier, our mailing list or e email list. Yes. It will be updated at Exactly. All times. They can subscribe, and then they would, yes. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? No. Any further, any further questions by the board? No. Thanks, Matt. No, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Stay put, though. <laughs> so, uh, so I have another policy before you tonight. This is the pregnant and parenting students. It does not have a policy number at, at this time. Again, this was a model policy put out by the MSDE, uh, specifically uh, excusing. It has provisions for excusing absences and allowances for makeup work, uh, and also uh, specifically for high schools to provide a designated private lactation space. My question is, who initiated this? The state, is this a state Comar? Yes. yes. So this is not something this board's initiating or any other board, it's a state Comar coming down. That's correct. And personally, my own personal view, we don't need it. I don't think we need it. But if it's state mandated, then there's an issue there. But I have concerns that it should be a parental right, physician, or whoever, is in, involved with that. I don't really, I know there's education, but there's a limit to it. And that's just my personal view as one member. And I, I understand that you can opt out, right? No, no, no. This has been, this is long I'm overdue. Not, no, 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 I'm not saying we can opt out. The parents can opt out if, if they don't want their students taking this class. This is not a class. Oh, no, it's not no, about no. class, dear. It's not a class. This is not about class. This it's is about a policy parents. on how we're going to Handle treat students who are pregnant. That might be in this situation. Right. Right. Okay. And, may, and it could be, be the father. It could be the mother. Right. Okay. So if the if the young father has to stay home with his child, then the attendance. And the attendance and how his work is handled. This is long overdue, and right. thank and you. And if, and if we have up. a child who's breastfeeding, then we would have an appropriate area for them to do so during the day. Um, that would be private Correct. and personal. And it's mandated by the state? Yes. It yes. Is. Okay, so I don't know if this is a stupid question or not. <clears throat> So if the parent's breastfeeding, and obviously it's a high school student, are we bringing the baby into this school? The, <laughs> or are we? I, I should say if they're pumping, okay. so let me clarify All that. Right. You're right. I know yes. what that is. Well, if yes. It's both, it's right? Really, right? So if they're breastfeeding, right. they'll need to pump later. Yeah. No, I know Baby's that. Baby's not with them, so. Right. But yeah, he's it's saying, both. He's I get it. Yeah. I was <laughs> trying to be general, not, but yeah. he's, uh, to be specific, yes, it would be that they <laughs> would have the an opportunity to, to use a station, station care of private to take care of right. their sure. pumping needs, yes. Right. Any other further questions? And this is going to come back in front of us for? Yes. Correct. For three Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Good evening, Mr. Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. I'm uh, Matt Kibler, Director of Accountability and Implementation. Amy Budak, Assistant Superintendent. And we're here to talk about a really exciting project tonight, uh, the development of a new strategic plan for the district. Uh, Dr. Salins task uh, Ms. Hudak and myself with um, leading this project along, the help, uh, along with the help of an uh, advisory committee. And we just wanted to kind of give the board a little update on where we're at, as well as what a strategic plan entails. So to start, just for some background information, um, what is a strategic plan? What does it look like? What does it um, include? So it evaluates mission, establishes direction, sets achievable goals for an organization to move forward. It will include a mission statement, um, vision statement, core values, goals, and objectives. And really the goals will set sort of, you know, what we're leading to the next five years and objectives will measure our progress as we go along. 
So for a little bit of background, our current strategic plan is expiring. It was a five-year plan um, expiring this year. It's really unfortunately derailed by COVID, <laughs> two years of interruption to the educational program, changing assessments. So during the middle of the plan, uh, the state of Maryland changed the um, assessments they're giving, administering to our students. And then now as well, uh, one of the reasons my position was created in the district, we have the blueprint for Maryland's future. And really that needs to be incorporated into anything we do when we talk about long range goal setting um, for the district. So this is the timeline we have set. Um, we're sort of in the middle of the timeline and it, it it, it sort of makes it feel like we're in the middle of the whole process, but really the, the real work is, is, is set to begin here soon. So we started working with what we, ha what we have called um, a blueprint advisory work group, and this has administrators, uh, teachers, staff members, community members, uh, a board member sits on it, and what they're really doing is helping us plan to implement the blueprint for the, for the district. And what we thought was we should use that group to also help us sort of guide and be a steering committee for the strategic plan since these two plans really, really need to work together. So back in the fall, we pitched this to the, to the group and what we're, where we're at in the process right now is we've designed these questions, um, interview and focus group questions, where really we can just get out in the community and, and with staff and students and sort of get an idea of what's important to our stakeholders. What do they think our role is? What is our purpose? What are we doing well? And in what ways can we improve? So we're starting to wrap those up, uh, and I'll talk. We'll talk a little bit more about that on the next slide. Um, and what we'll be moving into here shortly is um, compiling the data from those from those meetings and starting to draft a mission, vision, values, goals, and objectives with an overall plan, which I think we're on target for mm -hmm. to have something published and to present to you mid-summer, so that next year we can start to implement this. So like I said, our current progress, we're right now nearing the end of our interviews and focus groups. I think our last two focus groups are set mm -hmm. for next week. We've had roughly somewhere around 30 to 40 hours of these focus groups and interviews. Um, we've got community, um, community members that we've talked to, people from the library, retired teachers association, um, sheriff's department, county commissioners. We've had focus groups with parents, teachers, administrators, um, support staff is, is next week, students, which has been great to hear from them. And what we're really noticing from um, these groups, our themes are starting to appear. Almost every group we talk to, um, you'll get a set of somewhere three to six themes, what's really important to these groups. We've got things like um, just staffing, safety, what are some other things? preparing for future, whatever that means for students. Um, is, is that career? Is that college? Mental health, um, communication, understanding each other's differences and learning to get along. So it's, it's just really been um, a, re a rewarding process. And, and what we'll do is we'll take all that data and we'll, um, we'll set what's important for the mission, vision, and values, and then write goals around them and objectives that can be measurable to make sure that we're staying on track with the strategic plan for the next five years. So we'll start analyzing that data really as soon as next week um, wraps up. We'll talk as an executive team, we might send an email out to the advisory committee again just to make sure we didn't miss any groups. And then Ms. Hudak and myself will start analyzing this data and we'll take it back to the advisory work groups to start, um, start looking for what those themes are so we can finish writing the rest of the plan. Yeah, it's been a great experience. I thoroughly enjoyed hearing the voices. And I think President Smith, you mentioned um, based on Dr. Salen's presentation, having the community ha just to hear, just they want their voices to be heard. That was definitely something that bubbled up to the surface. So, um, it was just interesting, very interesting to sit back. And we we would interact a little bit, but it was really just listening to them. And, and they were very transparent and they shared, um, I felt as though they shared um, exactly what they were thinking, feeling, perceptions. Mm -hmm. So it was overall, it's been a great experience. We 
talked about, or communication came up a lot, and, and just ask about like, well, what are we doing well in that area? And and they're very complimentary of just this process, and that we weren't just you know sitting in this board office and making a strategic plan for Without what we thought was important. Input, yeah. And they encouraged us to keep reaching out to them. That came that came from every group: teachers, mm -hmm. parents, mm -hmm. um, and the students especially. We talked about ways that we could keep engaging them, and I and I am hopeful that these committees that uh, Dr. Salins was just talking about, we can keep engaged mm -hmm. with the community. So next step is to analyze the data and then we'll go from there. But it's it's been a good experience. So we look forward to sharing more as soon as we get more kind of um, put it together and have something a little bit more formal to show you. If we were getting a well-rounded people, I mean, not people, well, people, a lot of communications out there, so people will anticipate in this early, so they can, you know, tell us what they want to hear, or what not what they want to hear, but what they want to see, and things like that. Because sometimes groups don't get involved until the end, and it, to me, it's like a comprehensive plan. Let's do it early mm -hmm. and, and get the, everybody involved. Yeah, we tried to have a very diverse, mm -hmm. and, and the um, blueprint, our steering committee, really helped us identify who we met with, and, and you did share that. So, like the focus groups they identified, the individuals they identified, um, not, not necessarily the person, but the organization. Different sections of the, mm -hmm. so we're getting a good cross-section. But a great cross-section, yeah. Yeah, I think we did, sure. yeah. We actually had some blueprint advisory work group folks that wanted to participate in the focus groups and interviews, and I respectfully asked them not to, because uh, I wanted to get more input. They'll have they'll have a voice in the strategic plan anyway, when, when we're work, doing this important work. So, um, Definitely, I was trying to count it up. I, I think when you talk focus groups and things, it's well over 100 individuals that we've talked to, um, probably closer to 150. So, any other any questions for us? Yeah, board member. Hey. <coughs> Thank you so much. That's awesome. I was able to participate with all the students, which is a minimum of 12 at each of our secondary schools. So just in and of itself, those were right. amazing and informational. So thank you for all your work with it. Right. Um, kudos, job well done. There's towers. Next two, six and seven. All right. Good evening, Dr. Salins, President Smith, board members, executive team. My name is Jane Towers. I'm the CFO. Tonight we bring before you the expenditure status report for the month ending February for your review. The first one is the detail, and then we have a summary. Questions? The next one, the next one we bring before you is a summary of the ESSER two and three as far as expenditures to date. Later on in March, we'll bring a budget amendment for those two before you. But uh, you can see um, utilizing them as a grant has been written. So the first, the Esther is to 23, and the other ones are 24. Correct. Correct. Any board members have any questions? No. I, I appreciate you keeping us up on this because, as we've talked about our budget, this affects our it's affect our budget over the last year and over the next two years. Right. It's a I call it a grant. It's it's you know one time money, but we're using it. To do, a, to do a lot of projects and things that we need to, the school needs to do. That fits into the, this category. But uh, that's something I think the boards, and we all know it, have to keep a close eye on it because 23, 24, uh, I know there's other things coming up, but there's always something gonna come up. Exactly, it's, it's right know. around the corner, those end dates for sure. Okay. Thank you. Well, it's not added, but it's 6708, school calendar. Has everybody had a chance to look at the calendar and the results? And personally, I'm in, unless Dr. Salins is in, in thing, I have no higher need to do this, but you can explain to us.
evening again, President Smith, Dr. Salins, members of the board and executive team. For the record, I am still Michael Knoll, the Director of Human Resources. <laughs> I come before you this evening to present for your review the results of the calendar survey presented by the calendar committee. The calendar committee this year was made up of members of the Queen Anne's County Education Association administration from representing each of our levels of school as well as the central office as well as bringing in information from those school communities for input. We present to you tonight options. The calendar committee was formed in December and began meeting in January after a number of meetings and shared options with a lot of input from constituents throughout the community. The narrowing to two viable options are brought forth this evening for your review. I wanna thank first Tracy Kenna for the format of this year's calendar options as well as Lynette Power Waters for her work on the survey. So I do wanna thank them. The survey that went out um, received over 2,400 responses from our community. The breakdown of those, I guess I could do that. breakdown of responses we had 428 were from Queen Anne's County employees 396 were from student email addresses and 1600 were from non Queen Anne's County email addresses so we had a very good amount of responses from our community the two options and I'm not going to break these down day by day for you I will kind of capture the highlights for your review calendar a <clears throat> Uh, with that, we open with four PD days for the staff to start the school year. School opens for students on August the 29th. And as we have done in the past, it is a tiered system of entry for the students, which is outlined for you there with the circle notations. November 8th this year is a primary election, so schools will have to be closed. I know talking with Dr. Salins, there is hope that in 24, when we're back to a general election, that will not be the case if we can get the Board of Elections to hold uh, these elections outside of our schools, and that'll be able to be a school day for us. Thanksgiving break will still be Wednesday through Friday. Winter break will run from December 23rd through January 1st with the 22nd as a proposed abbreviated days, abbreviated day going into that. What calendar A is doing is we are embedding within the calendar three snow days, so weather contingency days. And those days are January 16th, which is Martin Luther King Day, February 20th, President's Day, as well as June 9th, which is at the end of the year, would, it would just be an add-on last day of school. If no weather days are necessary, those would be regular school days. I do know that Dr. Salins did get some feedback from the community about closing or bringing students to school on Martin Luther King holiday, as there are a lot of community events. And her response was maybe that the school system and the community can partner while students are in school to help celebrate that historic day. Uh, but I did want to bring that to the attention of the board. Spring break on calendar A is a little bit different than in years past. Spring break with calendar A's option is the week before Easter, which is a little different than it has been before. So school would be closed the week before Easter and then again on Easter Monday, which would be different. The last day for students would be an abbreviated day on June the 8th, and June 9th would be the last day for teachers. Unless it is a weather contingency day, and then everything gets pushed back one more day. The highlights of option B would be the five PD days would start the school year for our staff. School would open a little bit earlier on August the 25th, as you can see. 
and our youngest students, our kindergartners, would not start until that Monday, the 29th. So it gives them a little bit longer before they start their, their opening of school. November 8th still would be the primary election. We have no choice there. Thanksgiving would continue Wednesday through Friday. Winter break would be the same. Now, while we're in the winter break, the snow days that are built into the calendar in calendar B are all at the end of the school year. So there would not be any embedding of snow contingency days during the school year in this calendar. Spring break would be consistent with where spring break was this year with good Friday and then the following week off. And then the last day for students and teachers without weather would be June the 7th. If we do have weather contingency, we have three days built on at the end of the year. There was one modification after the um, survey went out and working with the curriculum and instruction team we did move one of the half days from august or from october the 28th to november the 2nd so it did not change the star at the end the the vacations or the breaks or anything it was just a more consistent move with the end of the marking period and when parent conferences take place so that all of the students and their parents can meet so that was the only deviation from what went out but other than that the calendars were pretty consistent so looking at the breakdown I guess that came a little bit sooner and I went through those already so when it went out to the community 71% of our community selected calendar a 29% selected calendar B as their option for this school year Do you have any questions for me? Are we voting on this tonight? That's the question I had. Informational item tonight. Only. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, the board can choose. We, to we, we could. I think we need to, as a board, decide and set a date when we're going to vote on it. Mm -hmm. Because it needs to be done soon. It needs to yep. be done soon. But the other side of that is, if you know, people hear this, and I, I can guarantee we're not going to keep everybody happy, which is fine. But I think everybody needs the opportunity to contact board members, contact the school if there's, if there's an issue on anything. Um, people got to realize we have we have 180 days to be in school with students. All right. Our, our teachers have a, another nine days in service. 189, yes. Um, there's I think I think I found out in the past with semesters changing and testing. There's certain you know you kind of got to work to schedule in a certain place because December January gets to be a little funny. Um, you know, and, and every year, you know, there's not much time off in February or March, and you know, it, it's. But you also can't start in the middle of August and go through all through June. So, um, Dr. Salins, when what when would you recommend that we vote on this? I mean, if you could tonight, it would be great. If you have the information, you feel it, you you have enough information to make a um, good decision. It's just like we were just working through the calendar process. It was new to us this year <coughs> as a team. And so I feel like we are a little bit later than we should be. We should have had this to you last month. And, and we'll take that responsibility. But we also wanted to make sure that it was thorough and that we sent out a survey so that, you know, I was trying to be proactive so that I did bring you all the information, but I didn't want to put it on as action item this evening because I didn't feel like I gave you enough time to walk through it but if you feel that you have the information you need with the survey and the two options um, then I, I have no problem with someone you know doing that tonight if not certainly we have a budget meeting next week and certainly we could put it on even though that's considered a budget meeting there's no reason we can't put it on there for a vote we could right. certainly do that and then again we have a work session on the 16th we could add it there or we could wait until the April meeting I don't think we should wait this I mean this a lot of people re rely on this to set their calendars for well, next that, year. It's a two-edged sword. You're exactly right. Some people could sit there and say, I need to know because they're making plans. That's and the other side, you know, they've got this out. And all of a sudden, even though I think we had a quarter responses, I mean, with the numbers I saw, if you have 5,000 parents, you have 7,000 students, you know, we, yeah. we, we've gotten, I think you're probably not getting more response. Everybody's going to look at it personally right. and say, I need this day off, I need that day off. Um, I'd be happy to put it on next week's agenda. At least that would give the board one week to decide. Yeah. Parents now are understanding, hey, next week we're going we're gonna to get the final result of what they are. The calendars are very close. I will let the board know that the reason that we went the one direction and offered options a is because per the Comar regulations, if we don't show a vested um, 
attempt to make up snow days within the schedule than if we were to ask for a waiver. If we say we had a lot of days out, five, seven, eight days out, um, if we don't show that attempt to make up days, then they won't even entertain a waiver. So if we make the effort to make up some of the days and then we go to ask for a waiver, we're uh, much more likely to get that approved. And so we're kind of sitting in that situation this year. We've made an attempt to make up days. The board approved that. You know that. We still have a day hanging out there. Um, we're going to wait for our season to be finished, and then I'm going to ask the board um, permission to go ahead and ask for a waiver of that one day instead of tacking it on to the end of the school year. So that that calendar just sets us in a position up front where we don't have to go through what we went through this year um, with the state board and asking permission to make up days. It's already built in. They they will approve our. You know they have to approve this calendar as well, as you well know. You approve it, and it goes to the state. So. Um, a is really just trying to be proactive is what I'm trying to say. Um, the similarities in the two calendars. We are so boxed in on our calendar because of the way Comar is written. We have so many days that we have to put in there that are off for you know, the way that it's written. Um, and so when you look at it in the long run, you really are boxed in to, you don't have a whole lot of variation. So that's why you see that the two calendars are very, very similar. I would only ask that, it, it, possibly that Martin Luther King Day and President's Day stay as holidays because that's what they are and tack on the three extra days at the end of the year like you have in calendar B and if we don't need them that's fine but I would I would like to maintain the sanctity of those holidays I, I don't know how anybody else feels about that well then then the board would vote to to accept calendar B okay I mean that that's I mean, Mike. Well, okay. Again, I mean, Mr. It. Dr. Noel, right. that's correct. Right. I mean, so there, it's in their purview. There's a slight yeah. deviation in the start of the school year, and with four PD days to start, five PD, five PD days to start. So there are some slight variations okay. there. But really, yeah. But okay. really, it would so be. So that would be yeah. the thing. We couldn't change calendar A to have it on the end, and we would just do calendar B where it's already included. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And and I think Dr. Shannon to make a point was, that you know if it's as of come January the 16th, if it has hasn't been used, there's a decision to be made then, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And if not, then we combine something as a group. Right. If, if we, you know, and make that, you know, you'd be, you know, because a lot of our schools are used for that day anyway, aren't they? If we don't use a snow day by the time Martin Luther King Day comes, then we celebrate Martin Luther King okay. um, out of school with a day out. And I say we celebrate it with a day in, a day on for students so that we partner with the community for that. If we get to President's Day and we haven't used a snow day, then we celebrate President's Day like we always would. So we're not automatically saying we're going to use those days as days on. We're only going to use them if it, within the time frame of snow days occur um, during those times. Could I, to the board, make a suggestion that we propose this to ne next meeting, yes. put it on as an action item for our budget, which would be the ninth, ninth mm -hmm. uh, and I encourage the public to make comments to the board or to just to the board mm -hmm. okay. uh, between that for the next seven days, and then we will have as an action item for our next meeting and budget up. Can we put this action. on the website and blast it out? I mean, even I believe it, yeah. Facebook, I believe it's been. just at least to get it out again one more time. Sure. Thank you. Is it, it, it on the website now? It is. Look, um, you can just put on there when you post the agenda. Just I think people need to know we're going to vote on it next okay. Wednesday. Okay, thank and you. And that would give people an opportunity to look at it. Um, and like I said, you know, yeah. I, I can agree with everybody, but but there's going to be a decision has to be made because there's certain things we have to do. And uh, I, I, you know, I always like to see. I I want them after Labor Day and before Memorial Day, but that just can't happen. You know? <laughs> just like that. Oh, okay. Is it <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you okay, so, so we will have that on the agenda for next week. Hey, we're scheduled for a break, but I say we keep running. Oh. What do you think? So then that means Dr. Knoll's up. <laughs> You could go next. Just go sit down. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Nat Light, Mr. Smith. Okay, everybody's had a chance to look at the uh, human resource report. Oh, they weren't kidding. Mr. I Smith, I make a motion to accept the human resources and substitute bus driver report as presented in closed session. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. <clears throat> a purchase approval, and that is Josh Combs. Josh Combs. Oh. 
Long time to see. <laughs> Dean for President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team, um, I'm here today to request purchase approval for the high school lab desktop computers. Um, it's broken up in two different purchase orders. Uh, the first one would be business labs, computer science, Arcus, uh, interactive media production, and the second one is our Inside Engineering, AutoCAD, they're a little bit more high-end machines because of the 3D graphics that they do in, for 3D modeling, so they're different type of machines. So um, basically we're trying to, so the machines have been replaced probably eight years. We haven't touched those, any of those labs, so um, they desperately need to be replaced, so. Mr. Combs, I see this is, has been, um Going through the intergovernmental cooperative. Yes, uh, the uh, this is through the Meek contract. Okay, um, the Meek. Okay. Meek. Yes. Maryland Education Enterprise Consortium. Yes, okay. uh, all counties are a member of that uh, okay. consortium, on, and that's where. We're... And the number of computers I'm seeing. It's basically about uh, six to eight labs per high school. And in each lab, that's how many? Thirty. Uh, about thirty. Yeah, the average is thirty machines. I see. Are three hundred thirty-two monitors? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And this is coming, this, this, uh, uh, the first one will be coming out ESSER, ESSER two, 2 funds. And the second one for the high school design engineer is um, Capital Outlay. Okay, does any board have any other questions? Let's take these separately. Okay, so Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept the contract uh, to purchase high school computer lab desktops from Trafera? Trafera, yes. Uh, fiscal impact dollar amount of $246,681.45. Budget source is FY 2022 ESSER 2 funds. Second. The motion is second. Any further discussion? All that say aye. <coughs> aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Okay, we have any questions, further questions on the design lab computers? So Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept the contract for high school PTWL CAD computer desktops from Trafera for $119,200. Budget source is FY 2022 unrestricted capital outlay budget. Second. A motion second. Any further discussion? No. All those here say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Josh. Nice Rob. to see you. Too. Yeah, you get Thank money. You. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Miss <laughs> Towers. Once again, I bring before you tonight a transfer request. Since the adoption of the budget, we have addressed an additional need. The additional need is for two school bus drivers. So the request is to transfer $30,000 from your other instructional cost to the school bus driver salary account in the amount of $30,000. Do we need to send a letter over to the county commissioners for this or this yes. is in-house? Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Page four. And these are bus drivers for our buses. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Yes, for our buses, correct. Yes. I didn't go down that far. And it's coming out of our unrestricted funds, because it's just going from one category to another. Correct, correct. We um, have recognized some savings in our other instructional costs for um, psychologist services that um, now the position is now internally, so there were savings from contracted to go into salary. So we're able to utilize that this year. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to ex to approve the FY 2020 due to adopted unrestricted budget um, transfers of $30,000 from other instructional costs con to contracts and transport transportation salary? $30,000. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion? Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Any other further discussion? All of you say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Carl. Good evening. Good evening, 
everyone, President Smith, members of the board, Dr. Salins, and executive team. My name is Carla Poland. I'm the facilities planner, Queen Anne's County Public Schools. I'm here tonight to ask your approval to purchase 70 handheld and 40 backpack style electrostatic sprayers, Victory brand, that will help our custodians in their daily cleaning and sanitizing tasks. This purchase will allow us to assign one handheld unit to every custodian, and we will have backpack sprayers then that are available in the schools for larger areas, such as our cafeterias, our auditoriums, our gymnasiums. If you recall, we invested in these units, electrostatic sprayer units at the beginning of the pandemic, and we're now out of the warranty period on those. The repairs are pretty costly, almost as much as buying new units. So therefore, we're hoping to invest in something that will give us a little bit more longevity and a better warranty period. We know that we have relieved the mask mandate and we're all very thankful for that. However, the virus is still present. So at this time, we have not changed our cleaning and sanitizing protocols. And we expect that we're going to continue with that because this is going to help us with regular flu virus. This will help us with norovirus. And we have a new standard now in Queen Anne's County as to how we clean and sanitize our buildings. We were able to trial several different types of units and we know that the custodians prefer these because they give them a much bigger tank so they don't have to refill as often as well as a longer battery life. So with this, the fiscal dollar amount would be $80,170. It was budgeted for us in ESSER 2. So did we do a, um, did we bid this out? We did not. This is cooperative purchasing. It is through the Southern Maryland contract with DACON. And I think I used toured, it might have been Southerville with you. You can spray this in a classroom, like even on this paper, and within minutes it could be, it doesn't really affect any, I mean, you can sanitize everything. That's correct. It's a very, very fine mist. It has an electrostatic particle that will actually wrap around surfaces. It's attracted to those surfaces, and therefore it gives us much more of a sanitizing factor than if you're just spraying and wiping alone. You know, we're, in a, we're winding down with COVID, but every year we have flu and other things. So this, I mean, and when you have 7,000 students in and out of school or 75, whatever it is every day, it's it's needed. And these are fabulous for our high touch areas too. Yeah. Right, That's yeah. Great. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve the contract with DACON to provide electrostatic sprayers, fiscal impact dollar amount of $80,170, budget source ESSER 2 funds. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, are down to citizens' participation. Any public comment? Does anybody else have any comments they'd like to make to the board this evening? Our future meetings, we will have one on 319, which will be our budget uh, meeting. For nine. 39, I'm sorry. It's okay. 39 next Wednesday. Yes. We will also have our calendar action item on that to vote on that. Yes. And then our work session will be on 316. Do I have any further thing for the calls? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Good evening.